Hello everyone. Lately I made a few videos on microcars that I think people seem to be enjoying. And I thought, why not take a look at one of the books that is a really great reference for microcars that I thought people might enjoy. This book dates from the 1990s, so it's actually pretty old. And it's called Klein Wagon, as you can see there. It has a picture of a wonderful little BMW Isetta, and that is actually the first year that the Isetta was offered in Germany because it has the bubble windows. It just has the the non-sliding the non-sliding windows making it more like a bubble car. Now this is what the original Isetta actually looks like. It's personally my favorite version of it. And there's a couple more. Uh, and it's a very colorful book, full of lots of little cars, and it's really intended for the person who already knows microcars. This isn't probably the best introduction to them because, as you'll see, it's not really a very good reference book since it's it's more of a coffee table book. Uh, Kleinwagen is from German. That's, that's the German word, as obviously small cars and it has it translated and in French. So yes, this is a uh, tri, what would, that, what would you call it? Tri-language? It's a multi-language book. They even restate things that don't need to be, like they, they don't need to translate every chapter title, but they do anyway. And so the whole book is set up like this, where it has three columns on each page. The detail they go into isn't so great that you couldn't make do with just having it be one language, but they translated it so that it would be marketable in the United States. And you can see here that it was published in 1993 in Germany. So Kleinwagen, what, what is in this book? Well, lots of famous photographs that you may have seen elsewhere. You can probably find these all over the internet, like the Austin 7, the Fiat Topolino, and the Gagomobile, pardon the shadow, it's a little bit sunny today. This is the, it's, it's not actually the, an early Gagomobile, this is a later one, which is identifiable by the door hinges being moved from the back to the front. That's one of the ways that you can tell with the Gagomobiles. Uh, so this would be probably 1962 or later. Same for the little the little coupe here. It's I find that the year that they call out on the uh, caption for most of these pictures is really the year that the car uh, dates that the car was introduced in. It's not necessarily the year of the car in the photograph, and in this case, it definitely is not 1957. It is a later Gago Mobile Coupe. It's probably uh, you know 64, 65, like kind of later. And you can see how in here you have multilingual. So here's the, the English text on the left side and then the German text in the middle and the French text on the right. Well, it looks like they, no, they do translate it. Okay. They just put the numbers there once, but they actually translate Italy three ways as if you wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> All right. So this is the introductory chapter which shows some of the early cars that we looked at, and then going to the later, a very 90s looking VW Chico. I don't know if they, I don't think they produced those, did they? Probably just a prototype. It says hybrid. Oh, here, Swatch car. Okay, so this is interesting because this is what the prototype version of the um, smart car actually looked, it looked like. This is the smart car prototype. And the original smart car design was really much more rounded. But this car, I believe this is the one that becomes the smart car. And I don't know if the Cabrio version was, was ever widely sold, but, you know, there's we recognize this. And I don't know how late they built the smart car. I think it's, it's just the early aughts, like it's like 98 to 2006 maybe. But, yeah, that's where it comes from, Switzerland in 1994. Adventurous Beginnings, and I do like the blue that they have here. And this is probably my favorite chapter because this starts the story of some of the earlier 
microcars. Here's a really good one, the, uh, the Hanamog Loaf. After reading about it a little bit, uh, Kamis Bro or Kamis Brot, Kamis, Kamis Brot, I don't know how you say that in, um, in Deutsch. Go ahead and let me know. The German army back in the 1920s apparently gave their soldiers their food rations in loaves of bread, which were sideways loaves. Like they were like, you know, like you'd get on any large loaf of bread, but it was like cut sideways. And so people nicknamed this car the army loaf because it looks exactly like a sideways cut, sideways cut loaf of bread. Like here's where the cut was made on either side. And this vehicle always has looked like this. This is a very early one right here, probably like 1925. And this is a little bit later, but they made these until, I think they did make these almost up until the war. So, um, it's a, it's a really interesting car. I don't know. Let's see what it says about the engine. It doesn't really say much about it. It has a small engine, but I don't know if it's one of those little two-strokes or if it's something... Um, I think it's a four-stroke in this, but I'm not 100% sure. But it, this is like the German version of the Austin 7. This is one of their early small cars. And then here's some, some French miniatures, Moshe... I think I saw a Moshe car at the Lane Museum. It was a, yes, it was a cycle car. It was like a pedal car. Well, after the war, and this is 1948, he started doing um, motorized. So this is like 100cc, like a little motor will be in here. Um, I think in the back on Moshe's cars, but it's just a little cycle car, a low cost, made in small numbers. And he made them until the, uh, the 50s. And they're really cute. I don't think they ever came to America, but yeah, they, they still exist. I think I saw one for sale in uh, over in Europe recently. Somebody had a restorable Moshe car for sale. Uh, here's probably one of my, this might be my favorite picture in the whole book, the Goliath, the little Goliath three-wheeler. And we've seen one of these in the Lane Museum. I was so excited to see it there. And there's the little uh, the little tailpipe that comes almost to a point, and it had the um, the back of it was open in my video on the lane, and it has that one. It's a 198 cc Elo single cylinder two stroke motor in the back of this car, and here's one where it's moving. Look, look, he's driving it, and you can see the blue smoke coming out the back. You know, so it's, it's not. It, this is not like you know, a, a thundering big American sedan. This is a little micro car with a big kind of a, it's not a big body, but it's, it looks kind of big, but from the size of the wheels, you can tell how small it is. And it's made entirely of plywood covered in leatherette. And this is beautifully restored. And I love how they parked it in front of a very German style barn. So 1934, and I, the year is probably correct. It's probably a 1934 Goliath Pioneer. Cutaway of the Topolino. And, oh yeah, here's the, uh, here's the 2CV prototype. Also looks like it's made, well, it's made out of metal, but the doors are clearly plywood. And that is just amazing. And they made the metal so that it would be easily, that you could just make this out of a flat sheet. The whole car is made that way, so you could use flat sheets. And I've read that this is the first car in history with something called active suspension. It has fully active suspension. And that means it bounces all over the place. But a little two-cylinder, and it has a hand crank. So this is 1936 in France. So while the Germans were working on the Beetle, the French were working on this, and it was quite successful. There's early Datsun. I think that is going to be like a uh, an Austin 7 built under license in Japan. Renault 4CV. Is that really, though, not really a microcar? A couple more really interesting ones. The, um, the Faldemobile made of aluminum, and is this like hammered aluminum so it's like flat sides on the Foldemobile. I think the same type of engine that's in that Goliath probably 
198 cc in that it's just a little tiny little tiny engine and oh, some weird some really weird things Myra I, I've always pronounced it Myra but maybe it's Mayra the company's still in business it still exists they make uh, like wheelchairs things for people who are just have disabilities and this vehicle here it's really it's one of the really weird little bubble cars from the 50s that came out during the time of the Azetta. It has a front opening door. This door is actually the front of the car opens only half of the front it opens. So this is similar to that, but I don't think many of these were made, maybe like five. I mean, it's not, that's, there's only black and white photos. I don't think any of these survived. But um, we saw, I think I used a picture of Mayra, a, a Mayra microcar in my video on Staunau and, and Vendax, and make sure you go watch that, by the way. Really cool one of the of the couple here with their, their Messerschmitt. And he says here in the caption, the picture is more realistic than the reader might think. The Messerschmitt convertible was indeed slightly exotic, and there was nothing shabby about it, despite the dowdiness of the people shown here. I don't know what that really means. But this car, the little Messerschmitt, was kind of like a fashionable go out on the night car for like middle class people in cities. It, it wasn't like, you didn't really drive something crazy like this as transportation. It was more of like a fashion statement. So I think, think that's what they're trying to say. Maybe it's just a bad translation. But there's the, the KR200, which I've seen one of these up close and can confirm they are absolutely tiny. Never never had the opportunity to ride in one, though. And what else do we have here? Oh, the Messerschmitt factory. I do love this picture, actually. Pardon the shadow again. They're making these Messerschmitts, and they are making the German version of the kind of, uh, um, like, newspaper or milk delivery vehicles right here. Which, as you know, if you've seen my uh, Wendax video, they made these as well. Probably use the same really tiny engines apart from making all their bubble cars. If the Goliath page was my favorite page, this might be my second favorite. This was, I think at the time when I had this book as a gift, my first glimpse of the original Lloyd when it came out in 1950, the Lloyd LP300 looked like this. And this, too, has a plywood body with leather covering. And one of them was parked right next to that Goliath in the Lane Museum. I couldn't be have been more lucky than to have been able to see those two cars that day. I was very excited and very much wish I could have gone for a drive in it. But unfortunately, it, its engine is only 293cc two-stroke, and that amounts to 10 horsepower but it has front wheel drive and it does look a little bit kind of, I don't know, designed in a shed maybe, but Carl Borgward made these cars and he actually made quite a few of them. More than 10,000 LP300s were built. So this is a wonderful German classic car that I'm very fond of and I will be making a documentary video on Lloyd hopefully in the next couple of months. I wish I could say weeks, but it takes me forever to do things. So there's the Kleinschnitzer, another real super famous little microcar from the same era, early 1950s with a tiny, tiny little engine. I do actually love this picture more than this one. <laughs> it's And it has front wheel drive. Like I'm just surprised how they did something like that with a car that is basically just got bicycle wheels. But yeah, very advanced. There's the Izetta with the door open and Mako 500. From what I've read about it, or at least in translation, it was really bad. Uh, the engine didn't work out very well and they didn't succeed in selling very many of these. And it's not particularly good looking. It looks like somebody, it looks like somebody tried to design a uh, Volkswagen Beetle copy and they, they literally phoned it in. Uh, yeah, 
It's, <laughs> but it's a cute car. It's it's interesting. So more German cars here. A really cool picture of. It looks like an Italian family in their BMW 600. You'd never see anything like that today. And the Spatz microcar, another car I'm familiar with, I've seen up close. Kind of ugly. <laughs> in the uh, Heinkel bubble car. Looks well worn. And these are really neat pictures in this book. So this is what you see in here, you know, like the Mopeta. If you know microcars, these are all like... This is like the greatest hits album. I mean, these are all the most famous microcars around. The Zundap Janus, it's like, you know, another kind of really well-known one. They don't really do the super obscure makes in here, well, except maybe Kleinschnitter. Goggle-mobile. And there's, so there's what the doors were like on the older ones. It had the, the hinges on the back of the door, so they open this way. Much easier to get in and out, but apparently less safe. I love the cutaway here. It did have a back seat, sort of. It doesn't look like it would work very well, but probably you just put your things back there. But you could get one of three engines. The uh, Glas made a 247cc twin cylinder that I think most of these cars had, or you could get 300cc or 400cc. So, and they were made until the late 60s. So this car is like a real, it's really well known. And they, there's at least 300,000 were made, I think, of all types of Gagomobile. But nowadays, you can't, I can't even afford a car like that. They're like 30, 40 grand. There's the, the Buckle Dart, another car that I've actually seen up close. So yeah, this is what, I've seen these two in Italy. Fiat's microcars of the day, the Bianchina and the, the 600, and the Multipla. And it's interesting seeing the Multipla uh, being used for like a picnic. I think most of them were, ended up being taxis. The second version of the Lloyd, which is the uh, Alexander. And you should recognize this car as well if you know my channel. I have one of these. It's in 118 scale, so <laughs> I wish I could have a full-scale, a one-to-one -one scale Lloyd Alexander, but uh, the, at least the model that I have is exactly this color scheme. So that's actually why I bought that model, because it has this, it's the same colors as this. I love the big, huge wheels, the backwards opening doors, and the shape. It's just a really unique looking car. Borgord made some very interesting automobiles. It's really a shame that he's gone. And here's another really cool one. And this book actually explains, this little caption actually explains a little bit of the Trabant's origins, that it was the direct predecessor was the P70 of 1955, which is a car that I have uh, mentioned at least once I do have a model of it, I don't remember which video it's in, I forgive me. It's green, the one that I have. And the Lane Museum, which I have to mention once again, did have one of the uh, one of these P70s, and it was like parked in the back, though I couldn't really get to it. But uh, this is a P50. And when this car first came out in maybe 1950, 58, it was originally just called the P50, and then they renamed it the Trabant, and I think they gave it that name to name it after the Sputnik satellite, which the uh, Soviets had set up, because East Germany was in the Soviet sphere of influence. So this is an earlier version of the Trabant, the P50 Trabant, so that's going to be like early 60s, this one, this version, and then much later, it started to look like this, and this is the open car version, which is called the Tramp, it's kind of an unfortunate name, but uh, <laughs> these these were actually really popular in the late 80s. And um, but then the, the, everything, they all went out of production because, of course, the wall came down and Germany reunified. So no more Trabants. And NSU in the uh, 1950s, you have the NSU Prinz, the original version, the Prinz 4, and these were sold all over the world which you could get a Wenkel engine in one of these. And then they even made a convertible version of that. So that's NSU in the 50s and 60s. And then it starts to get into the uh, the later period, like the 60s 
and the 70s and 80s, we are like a basket. <laughs> and then this thing, like a Pope mobile on three wheels. So the modern, modern small cars, modern Kleinwagen. And yeah, you have your Fiat Panda and the 126. I actually have seen one of these on the road like a few months ago. A guy drove by in one of these, must have been going to a car show. And uh, it was very noticeable. It has a four-stroke engine, but it sounds like a lawnmower. I think the engine's in the back. Only time I ever saw one. Dornier Delta II. That's like a very... These guys, they look like, uh, you know, a couple businessmen. And it's like very 70s looking with the kind of like wood panel. It looks like 1970s furniture, this thing. And it's got the flat glass. Um, it's still sort of a bubble car, but it's like a square bubble. <laughs> Ligier. And this is like another version of almost a smart car type thing. So, yeah, they started getting kind of boxy. And then there's the Commuta with the batteries. And then GM tried to do like a, a publicity thing with their with some micro cars. And again, it's like, it looks like the board directors went out for <laughs> the prototypes. It's such, it's so corporate, the the way that they did it. Nothing like the Europeans, very dour and business-like and within these little tiny cars. They never sold them, they never made them. Some proof that you can fit two people inside of a peel. And I think this is like 49 cc, probably like 30 miles per hour you might get. It's a really cute and weird thing. The whole front of the car has to flip forward to get into it. And I think that's the case with this as well. Oh, it does look like it has a door on the side. Doesn't look like it'd be much fun in a collision. The lean machine. <laughs> so that's this book, uh, Klein Wagon. I thought I would just go take a look at this. And uh, show one of the do, do a book review. I haven't done a book review video in a little while. Uh, you can probably still find these for sale on the on the secondhand market, like at eBay or something, and well, maybe Amazon as well. I don't shop on Amazon personally, but uh, it's up to you. It's probably not very expensive. These are fairly common. It was made by Tashen, and that's like a pretty big publishing house. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at that with me. And if you did, throw a like on the video there and I'll see you again soon in another video. Take care. Bye.